Hello and welcome. It's time for Dun 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 Victory Zone. We're so happy you're here. Are you excited to praise the Lord? I am. First, we have a worship song, followed by a lesson from one of our Victory Zone teachers. After that, we will have say our confessions, and then we will have some more worship songs. Parents, don't forget, help us with our memory verse for the week and the activity. Are you ready? Let's get started. kids. I'm Pastor Nitra and welcome back to Victory Zone. We are continuing our series, Escape from Bethlehem. Today's bottom line is Jesus is the King of Kings. Come on and say it with me. Jesus is the King of Kings. Today we're going to learn that Jesus is the King of Kings and we can trust him with our life. Our key passage is Matthew, the second chapter, the first through 11th verse. But our memory verse is Isaiah, the seventh chapter and the 14th verse. And it reads, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin is going to have a baby. She will give birth to a son and you will call and he will be called Emmanuel. Let's read that one more time. The Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin is going to have a baby. She will give birth to a son and he will call. He will be called Emmanuel. Now, we remember when King Herod learned that a new king was to be born, he became very jealous and angry. He asked that the Magi, he asked the Magi to lead him to Jesus, but God made sure that that didn't happen. We're going to learn how Jesus is our king of all kings. Let's get into our lesson. 
So again, our bottom line is that Jesus is the King of Kings. Do you know that the secret to any great movie is not just a great story? It's not just action and lights and cameras. You know what the secret to a really great hero movie is? Not just a great hero, but a great villain. Yes, a great villain. Escape rooms know this too. This is why in many escape room scenarios, there's a villain to defeat. Maybe it's a monster or a stalker or someone who come into the room when time runs out and get you if you can't escape. Or maybe it's the enemy spy agency you're trying to get out of a secret room or maybe a mummy or something like that. Even though it's all pretend, having the enemy makes it a little more exciting and fun. It gives you something to oppose, someone to beat. So the question is, can you defeat him? Well, when we read the Christmas story, we often focus on the joyful images of Christmas, the angels, the carols, and all of the beauty that surrounds the birth of sweet Jesus. Of course, the wise men and gifts, we sometimes forget that this story actually has a villain. Who remembers the villain? That's right, the villain in the story is King Herod. King Herod was his name, and he was very evil. Why? Because he wanted to change the course of history. King Herod was the villain because what did he want to do? Kill baby Jesus. He wanted to kill the king because he was jealous that one day this baby would grow up to be better and stronger than him. So when you read the Christmas story and we learn that King Herod the name King Herod, it's because the wise men entered the story. Seeking a newborn king, the wise men first went to the palace of King Herod, who did not take this news very well. Herod played nice and he told the wise men that, I want to celebrate the baby too. But the truth is, he wanted to kill the baby because he was jealous. But as powerful as Herod may have been, Someone much more powerful was watching over Jesus. That's right, God. God was watching over Jesus. Go and get your Bibles. Let's read this story. Go to Matthew, the second chapter, and let's look at verse one. It says, after Jesus was born in Jerusalem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, the Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who who has been born king of the Jews. We saw his star when it rose and we came to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all of Jerusalem with him. When he called together all the people's chiefs, priests, and the teachers of the law, he asked, where is the Messiah to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet wrote. But you Bethlehem in the land of Judea are by no means least amongst the rulers of Judea, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. When Herod called the Magi secretly and found out the exact time the star had appeared, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go, search carefully for the baby, and as soon as you find him, report to me so that I can go and worship too. He didn't really want to worship though. He was, it was a trick. He was trying to get Jesus so he could kill him. After they heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and they worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of Frankus gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, here's what we, we see in that story. We see that Herod told them to go and tell him where the baby was. He was really just trying to trick them. He was not trying to worship Jesus. Herod was a very powerful man and he commanded respect and his word was law. But there's a law that's even more powerful than the earthly law and that's God's law. God's knew Herod's heart and he sent a messenger to warn the wise men not to go back to see Herod. God protected the life of Jesus. When God is so protective of Jesus because 
without Jesus, God could not save us from our sins. As a grown man, Jesus took the punishment for our sins. We know the story, right? Jesus came down and took our sins, but first he had to be born. We can trust Jesus completely, even with our lives, because he is the king of all other kings. Whenever we go into an escape room or a fun laser tag area or some sort of museum muse, amusement park, we are trusting the owner of that park. We trust that while we, are, we may feel nervous or scared with roller coasters and stuff like that, we believe that ultimately we're pretty safe. No harm is going to come to us. Well, life doesn't come with guarantees. And even in amusement parks, things can happen. But the good news is, we actually can trust Jesus with our life. There is nothing to fear. We know how life will end up. We know where we will be when it's all over. We know that while the world can scratch us and bruise us and maybe give us some bumps and bruises and hurts, we are safe with Jesus because he's the King of Kings. We're blessed that we're able to worship freely in this country, but around the world, there are people who actually can't worship Jesus freely. There are Christians, um, there are Christian kids, some may even be your own age, they do believe in Jesus because there is a king higher than any other king. They still worship him even though it may be dangerous for them. Just as God protects his son, he is looking out for us too. He will comfort us when we're sad. He will heal us when we're sick. He actually has already healed us. He has picked us up. Most importantly, he will take us home to heaven when we go on after this life. Our king is the king of kings. There are other kings, but Jesus is the king of kings. Let's thank God for being such a powerful king. So what do we learn? That Herod understood that Jesus was going to come and change everything. Herod was a king, but he knew that Jesus was going to be the king of kings. The same is true for now, forever, and always. We serve the one who's higher than everybody. Have you ever had someone and you said, that's the boss, and then you realize that the boss has a boss? Well, when we say Jesus is the king of kings, that's exactly what it means. Everybody else has to bow down to Jesus. He's the most powerful king. So it doesn't matter what you're afraid of or what's coming against you. Jesus has more power than that. We serve the king of all other kings. That should give you comfort to know you don't have to worry. You don't have to be afraid because the king of kings is always with us. Let's say a prayer of thanksgiving for that. Father God, thank you for sending Jesus for sending him to be the king of all kings and the king of our life. We thank you that we are saved and we praise you for Jesus' life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. We hope you enjoyed this lesson and we hope you understand that no matter what comes against you, you serve the king of kings. You're going to be fine. Love you. Bye-bye. Wow, what a great lesson. Did you learn something? I know I did. Let's have confessions. Repeat after me. God is the strength of my life, and I can do anything but Jesus in me. I love others because you first love me. I am an overcomer. Your word makes me a winner every time. No weapon formed against me shall ever prosper. I listen, I learn, and oh, I obey it. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me a chance to do great things for your kingdom. Parents, don't forget to help us with the memory verse for this week and the activity. See you again next week at the zone. When Thanks. there's an ocean of doubt in front of me And my back's up against the wall I know it's an opportunity For my God to show his heart and it may look impossible in the natural But I know that it's not Cause I know that my God